Stephen Jennings, the global CEO of the Renaissance Group, joins us now live from our studios in Lagos, Nigeria, to run us through some of the company's Africa strategy moving forward. Stephen, thanks so much uh, for having joined us this afternoon. With all that's playing out globally, let's take a look at uh, emerging market appeal right now. What's the status in that regard, according to you? you know, emerging markets have obviously been caught up in this tremendous uncertainty surrounding the global economic outlook and in particular the, the fiscal concerns in, in Europe. And really that's caused a bit of a hiatus in terms of capital reallocation and capital market activity generally. But I think as we're getting more clarity around the outlook in the major Western economies, we are going to see a continuation of this really historic movement in capital away from the G7 towards emerging markets. Where does Africa um, fit uh, within that equation, Stephen, and your uh, global market strategy at Renaissance? Yeah, we, we think that Africa, the African continent, will be the biggest winner in that process. Um, Africa's underinvested. African assets are the cheapest in the world. Everyone knows the African uh, economic story now. You know, we, we don't have the same intellectual or, or, or data blockages that people had three, four years ago. So the global investor community understands the Africa story, but they're, they're underinvested. And as soon as markets normalize, that is going to lead to big capital flows, big revaluations, and, and a lot of capital raisings through, across the continent. From the Renaissance Group side specifically, what kind of kitty are we looking at when it comes to funds available to be deployed and take advantage of that opportunity on the continent over, let's say, the next five years? I think the capital markets here will be transformed. Obviously, the South African markets are, are mature and they're developed. So I guess I'm speaking more about the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa and, and, and North Africa. But you can, you know, in, in Russia in the last cycle, we saw daily volumes go from $10 million to $5 billion a day. And that's the kind of percentage change you can see in countries like Nigeria. But right, right across the region, I think we'll see an absolute transformation in the size and the sophistication of the domestic markets and the integration of those markets within the international Well, investment talking about that sophistication, I mean, in Nigeria, we know that there are many issues around uh, stockbroking and regulation of the capital markets. What are your thoughts on uh, some of the changes that need to be made to modernize Nigeria's financial industry as well as the capital markets? You know, we've seen this in many other countries we've operated in. You know, we, we have been into markets where when we started, private ownership was literally illegal and by definition there were no capital markets. And we've seen the same kinds of regulatory inefficiencies, infrastructure inefficiencies that you have in Nigeria. And what almost always happens is as the market develops in size and diversity, the sheer weight of money, the interests of market participants to iron out those efficiencies eventually results and those issues being addressed over a period of time. Mm -hmm. We were seeing that process happen before the crisis in Nigeria. I think as activity levels pick up, as engagement with global investors pick up, those issues can be can be addressed over a period of two or th three years. We know I that, don't uh, see them being a material issue in three or four years' time. Well, we know that you're in South Africa through BJM, uh, and uh, you know we've unpacked that strategy a bit in a South African context. The word on the street over in Nigeria is that in an effort to grow the business over on that end, Rencap is considering acquiring a Nigerian bank or um, one of the many boutique investment banking firms in the country. Uh, what's your view on the kind of rumors that are doing the rounds right now? We are, we are the largest shareholder in ETI, uh, which is the big commercial bank in sub-Saharan Africa operating in 30 countries. We're very happy with that shareholding. We're definitely not looking to replicate the BJM platform in, in Nigeria. We have a very large team. We have 25 people on the ground here. Um, we have a number two market position in the equity market already. We're very happy with that team. We're very happy with the management. We're supporting it with management and resource from Joburg now. So, no, we'll keep investing in our existing platform.